nicely timed. Hello and welcome to Fairway Media's coverage of Raven's Run at Lucky Mud Disc Golf Course in Skamakaway, Washington. This tournament was held in August of 2022. I am Max Spears and here with me is... Christian Wolf. Our feature card has... Kenny Clark, Ian Blake, Bo Midland, and myself. Thank you to our tournament directors, Adam and Sarah Fletcher. And thank you as well to our sponsors, Dynamic Discs and Fort George Brewery in Astoria, Oregon. Here we see our players. We've got Kenny Clark leading us off, followed by Ian Blake, Bo Midland, and my co-commentator, Christian Wolf. Okay, here we go. What was the weather like today, Christian? A little blustery, actually. Uh, Temperature-wise, not too bad, but there was some wind out there. It's like a nice little crowd out there. Now this course is on private property. Is that right? Yeah. So this is actually the TD's family farm that he's lived at, and they've had a course out there in some way, shape, or form since the '80s. Um, but this new layout has been here for a few years and playing really nice. Nice, it looks beautiful. Looks like there's a good crowd out there. Let's see what these guys can do. So here we have hole two. We're starting on our, our normal hole two. Hole two. Uh, we've got 293 feet. It's uh, substantially downhill and sloping away from the basket. You got a lot of trees to miss on the way down there. Really just trying to throw something straight, whatever lands in the middle. Now this is the rare hole that averages exactly three for the tournament. I can see that. Kenny's hopping for the left-hand side there. He's able to fade right towards the basket. I'm guessing he's going Z Extreme there on the forehand. Yeah, I think so. Something that's going to dig into that hill and stop. Here we've got Ian going the same route but catches early. We've got Bo opting for the backhand line. Yeah, he's trying to bend it left or right. I don't think he's quite committed to that. Yeah, look maybe a little early out of the hand. He should be able to chip up for par. I am trying to go the right side. I didn't quite get the line on it, but somehow sneak through those trees. It's a nice little field goal to make there. Yeah, I got the heart rate pumping, man. I thought it might kick it in. Some nice love from your card mates. And we've got Ian for his approach. How far are we sitting from the basket here? It's probably on the 100-ish spot so it's a touchy approach that's honestly probably a good tree because it slopes down left pretty far yeah this angle really lets us see the undulations on the green yeah we're sloping away on every side of the green <clears throat> here so you got some ferns to catch you but it's a it's a touchy little shot nice place to end up for Kenny doesn't care about the death putt just bangs it home yeah, that's a nice putt for him. Good way to start his round, and that must mean that you are even closer. I'm closer with a similar look, even with the basket. How much are you thinking about that hill back there? I'm thinking right now that this is my first tournament on film, and that just popped right out. A little, little undercommitted. Looks like you stayed on the hill. That's nice. Didn't roll way too far. We've got Ian converting for his par. Here's Bo for his. Go, Bo. Nice putt right off the pole. Yeah, I'm a little, a little shaky on this first hole. And, uh, you know, kind of wish that would have gone, gone into the lost footage pile. The camera nerves are real. I mean, it's it's <laughs> intense. And you were telling me before the round, this was your first time on camera. Yeah, correct? it was. Yeah, especially the first putt. You get a little break. You feel like you got to convert. Feel those nerves, and it's hard to get the lower body engaged. Yes, sir. 
here we've got hole three, par three, 296 feet. Looks like we want to avoid these trees here at the beginning of the fairway, find our way up over this hill, maybe take a nice skip up onto the green and try and convert your birdie. Yeah, it's kind of a uh, deceivingly uphill. It's not super far as far as elevation, but with the low ceiling, kind of plays as a quadruple mando to get to the pin. Yeah, it looks like there's really just that one line coming up the middle there. Throw it straight. Easier said than done. Ian does a good job there. It's going to be coming to rest a little short, but a good shot. Yeah, that looked like a nice line out of Ian. Here we've got Bo. Same sort of throw as from the first hole. A little bit early out of his hand. Exactly. Hopefully he can chip up pretty easily from there. I'm trying to bend my sidewinder up there. Put it a little low. Bo continues with the early release. Here we see where Kenny ended up. I'm guessing he's going to try and jump putt this home. Correct. Yeah, a little early left for him. Get the jumper oh. just, just right in the middle of the band. That's a really nice effort coming off the last hole, though. Making sure, keeping it down the middle, draw metal, Ooh. easy cleanup. Yeah, tough break for Ian there, another band. Yep. Man. Oh, I mean, we're really getting the band back together here. <laughs> the band has claimed a few victims on this hole, that's for sure. Bo finishes out his bogey there. Yeah, we're all just trying to get comfortable on the course. Having a good time out here. Now, did you guys know each other prior? I know you and Kenny know each other. Did you know these other guys? Was it a good vibe on the card? No, that was my first time meeting both Bo and Ian, and they were a good good hang. Nice. That always makes for a nice yeah. round. So here we have hole four, par three, 374. This is, again, going back downhill. It's kind of a theme out here at Lucky Mud. We go up and down pretty much the whole time. Uh, we have a double mando, so this... Uh, chestnut tree on the left and the bushy one on the right are both mandos. Kenny go does a good job kind of going straight down the oh, middle, but it gets cut out in his prime. Yeah, this is a really cool hole. It looks like a lot of fun to throw. It's a specific shot. It's kind of straight and has a little baby fade at the end. I think throwing something in the mid-range fairway capacity is pretty good. I'm taking kind of a flippy mid, and I do not commit to the hyzer, so that's going to come down short and right. Bo again a little undercommitted, but gets a nice kick to the middle of the fairway at least. Yeah, here we have our players trying to chip up. Nobody clean to the green, but maybe we'll see a little action from deep. Nicely done there by Kenny. Gets himself up for an easy par. Bo going backhand putter. That looks to be pretty good. Is that fairly close to the basket? Yeah, that's definitely in circle one. Um, we have another slope behind the basket here, so you got to have touch coming into the green. I try to Anheuser my putter in there, and it just got caught by something high. There's a lot to miss in this hole. Yeah, that looked like a pretty uncomfortable lie from where you were. Yeah, this is just a layup for Bogey. Mm -hmm. That's Ian's layup for par. He was definitely buried back there. Kenny converts his par. Bo and Ian are hoping to do the same, and Christian is looking to tap in his bogey. Yeah, this hole's on the harder half of holes on the course, so, I mean, par's a decent score here. It's really hard to access that green from the tee. Yeah, this hole did not see a lot of birdies. It was only looking at a 13% birdie rate, a lot of pars coming in at 
and then we've got the final 6% as bogeys. Sounds about right. <clears throat> We're on to hole five here, another par three, 380 feet. You wanna follow this fairway down on the right side and find your way into the green. Kenny's gonna opt for the forehand. Looks like there's gonna be a left side gap. Forehand roller. Oh, no. you're, just, you're just going forehand. Is Kenny just trying to flex that out or try and roll it or what's he thinking there? I know he had had some success with a, a big kind of panning flex shot there. Um, I think he just didn't quite get the height or the pop on it. Yeah, he's very good at those forehand angles. I wouldn't doubt that he was able to get it a few times in practice. Yeah, I th think the standard play is kind of this power hyzer that starts low and just get it down that right side. I draw, I draw up that line pretty much exactly how I, how I did, but it still comes up short. Yeah, I liked your line the best. You, Ian, and Bo all seem to uh, finish a little early, but you really committed the most out to the hyzer. Bo might be feeling that camera as well a little bit. We've got another early release from him. He's going to have a little work to do for his par. Yeah, I think so. Kenny lays up nicely for his par. Now, what are you thinking here? Are you full send? Yeah, I was pretty pretty confident in that one, and yeah, I don't count on the week. you know you're you're new to the course and the uphill. You just haven't I hadn't quite dialed it in yet. It was a little a little further than I thought. Ian gets a really nice commitment on it, but doesn't quite time out the fade correctly. Yeah, I can't quite get that one to drift back in. Here's Bo looking at about 24 feet. A little left side. A little bit undercommitted, gotta extend for that one. He's gonna have to clean up his bogey. Kenny with another par. Ian and Christian looking at the same, and Bo with a pretty easy bogey tap in. Yeah, a bit, of, a bit of a slow start for the card. I know that we all wanted a few more bo birdies than we got so far. But there's always the next hole. So for this course, are you trying to get your birdies early, late? Where's where's Birdie Alley on this course? I think that there are basically birdie opportunities on every hole here. Um, they all ask for pretty specific shots, including this. We've got hole six, it's par three, 384. Uh, it's playing downhill. We have an OB ditch on the short left of the basket here, um, where it gets kind of shadowy down there. Basically get a, a slow panning hyzer out there, stick on the green. Kenny's trusting something moderately stable here. I'm not sure exactly what he's throwing. I think that's a champion T-Bird flexed out there. That's a nice shot by him, good commitment, yep. nice angle. Black hand, backhand flex shot's not his known strength, but he's a guy who knows his way around a frisbee. He makes it work on this hole. <laughs> Absolutely. Ian with more hyzer, a little higher. Do you like this line? I do. It's uh, it's crashing, and really you want you want to be able to hyzer in or come in soft somehow to stick on this green. It's another green where it's kind of sloping away on every side. But you got some space to work with. I throw a nice shot out there, coming up a little bit short, but well in the circle. <laughs> Yeah, that looked nice. Was that your sidewinder that you threw earlier? That is actually the Castaplast Falk. I've been leaning on that for the last few years. It's nice and neutral. If you commit to an angle, it'll it'll hold it. Love a disc like that. I think I like Bo's Bo, Bo, shot the best here. Um, he's going to come up just long in the pin. Yeah, that looked nice. Uh, pushed the most, kept it tight. All good shots. A little the sighting of Chuck Mintz there, Seattle area tournament director. <laughs> Shout out to Chuck. Yeah, nice know. birdie by Bell. Yeah, nice line. commitment. Good luck, buddy. If he's out, that must mean everybody finished out pretty good. Yeah, we'll have to see. Making the adjustment, getting a little lower. Yeah, that's a great putt by you. Good commitment. Right on the stripe. 
after seeing our drives, I think we all got a little, uh, the morale went up on the yeah, card a little bit. Too. Yeah, star frame on this hole is pretty oh. bad out. Yeah. Kenny loves the star frame. He appears to be the closest. I like that flex angle that he threw. That's going to push the distance mm -hmm. better than the, the straight hyzer. And you see him get rewarded with a nice tap star in there. Frame, boys. Yeah, I think he, he star threw frame, boys. a slightly slower disc than the rest of us and just committed on that Thank angle. And... Yeah, and here we are. On to hole seven, par four, 486 feet. We're trying to clear out of this gap here. It looks like an OB river in the middle of the fairway. We want to travel across that and find our way to this tree, which, uh, Christian, I hear you know a little something about that tree. <laughs> yeah, so that is actually a 100-plus-year-old American chestnut tree that Justin just crashed into. And uh, he hit it so hard that he knocked it down. You'll see once we get up there. Hard to believe a little drone could do that, but, you know, that's an old tree, getting a little geriatric. <laughs> Couldn't quite take the impact. Looked like a nice shot from Kenny. Really good shot from Kenny. He gets it uh, way up there. Being past that road is uh, is kind of a pump. So fun. Ian looks pretty good. Maybe fading out. Not quite as much distance. This is that Falk again from you. Yeah, and I do not get the nose down. It's playing kind of downhill off the tee, and uh, that hyzer's out a little early. We have another double Mando out here. Uh, that we'll see in a minute. Come on, dude. Oh. Now, how far are we looking to cross it that OB yeah. okay. pond? Uh, let's see. To get past those second set of oh, red stakes, okay. there's probably a, at least a 325, good, 350 man. foot really shot. <laughs> um, and if you don't get the nose down, it's playing kind of downhill. So you're gonna you're gonna go one way or another. Yeah, Ian with a tricky lie here. You can see how that tree is now down. Yeah, this tree actually went down a day before Ravens Run 2021. So they decided to hang that basket there. And it's making a really nice feature on the, on the course. Yeah, it is interesting when that kind of happens and turns out to be something kind of cool. We have Kenny with a long look for Eagle. He looks to be Ooh. really running it. He liked it. He, he definitely liked it out of his hand. He liked it. I'm not sure if the wind was a factor there. Just uh, didn't quite fade out. Bo ops for the layup. Here you are. Are you giving this a little bit or are you just kind of laying that up for par? Uh, it was, uh, it was somewhere in between the two. I think that's fair. This is a pretty tricky attempt to make. Things are sloping away. Even if just a little bit, you never know how it's going to roll. Kenny doesn't like the left side putt, but it is in. Yeah, you can also see the wind pick up. up and install this thing? Like... Into the basket <laughs> and almost blew his disc out of the basket. Nice little dunk by you for par. Yeah, I love a hanging basket. I'm a big fan of, uh, if we're going to raise baskets, we should hang them and lower them and do all sorts of weird things to them. Yeah, I think Lucky Mud does a really good job of tastefully doing those types of things uh, where they make sense and it's not overdone. So this looks like one of our more straightforward holes here. Par 3, 381 feet. Is this next to you? Hole 8. Is that for us? Is that for you? Friends coming up on the card. Always good to see. A lot of people who have lived either in Seattle, South Washington, North Oregon, who have traveled between those areas to play disc golf and got to know each other. Kenny's going for the kind of the standard play here. It's playing a little downhill, but you definitely want to move something from left to right and uh, sloping downhill away from the basket the whole time. Now, do you like his angle on the forehand there? That seemed to come out a little a little high and early. Um, I think he's trying to get that out a little bit wider and a little lower and have it skip up to the pin. Yeah, I was worried about Ian's shot there. You could see it in frame down on the left, rolling down the hill and away. Yeah, the backhand's a tough shot here. You really have to turn it perfectly and, uh, and have the height and a lot of things working for you. 
That looked pretty nice out of you. Yeah, um, I think if I threw something with a little more integrity, that, that would have been a lot closer. Um, however, that one has no fade. Bo was really the nicest shot of the group. Um, standard forehand, chip it up into the hill. Ian finishes a little early left, finds its way down the hill a touch. You with a nice layup. This grass appears to be pretty friendly on these approaches. It's, it's pretty thick, and uh, yeah, if you're not super close to this one, that downhill slope can really get in your head. Kenny maybe hearing the shouts in the background. Didn't seem to love that putt, but we'll tap in for a par. Bo with his birdie look just bangs the cage. Oof. Yeah, and you hate to see it roll back to almost where you were just standing. Yeah, no one likes the automatic disc return. No, definitely not. Kenny doesn't love the par there, but not a lot of damage done. This is a forehand hole, and he's a forehand player. I'm sure he's feeling frustrated. Bo cleans up his par. Very nicely done by him. Ian and Christian will look to do the same. Yeah, I'm sure Bo's not super happy after that great drive, but we'll take par. Nice putt by Ian. Gets it into the basket, able to move on to the next one. And same for you. It's Pretty typical. Yep, we'll be moving along to hole nine. This is basically a straight shot once you get out of the initial gap. You have some trees on the back side of the green to catch you. Again, a little bit of slipping away from the basket. Whatever you can get to go straight in 270 feet. Jumping in. One time for me. Kenny with a really nice low forehand, skipping up to the basket, kind of flashing the chains a little bit. Yeah, that's that Z extreme again. I'm sure he was hoping for a little more jump on the skip. But should give him a nice birdie look. Ian with a nice shot. Here you are. You going putter here? That's a, that's this kind of flippy origin that I've been throwing. Nice. And just committed to the hyzer angle, and it just likes to go straight. That's a nice disc, a little small diameter mid-range. Mm -hmm. I like those discs. I'm somebody who still throws a panther. Oh, yeah. Those feel nice. And Bo, back to the early release. He's going to have our toughest look for birdie. Let's see if he can find a way through these branches. There's a pretty cool tree on the green here. Looks like many trees growing out of another tree. Yeah, it's kind of a, an older nurse log there. And he runs away a little bit. There's a bit of a creek back there. He's going to have some work to get back for par. Yeah, this is a, it, you know, simple hole in concept from the tee, but you can tell that the green plays tricky from a lot of these different angles. Like Egan here has to think about, all right, if I miss, how awkward's my putt going to be? You saw Bo end up in an awkward spot. It gives you a little something to think about. Yeah, you really have to be mindful as Ian makes a really nice putt. Yeah, he was not worried about anything going on in that green. He saw the pole. He released at it, gets himself a nice birdie as reward. Bo coming back for par. Things at home. That's nicely done. Uphill, straddle, awkward stance. Those are stressful putts. Kenny is rewarded with a nice look from his forehand. Should have brought my mini over there. I like that Kenny's helping us out with the commentary here. Yes. Yeah, dude. We could really leave it up to him and it would be okay. And that origin ends up really nice for you. Easiest tap in, nice birdie, on to hole 10. Here we've got a par 4, 570 feet. Looking to clear as much distance as you can up towards this gap off the tee so that you can find yourself with a nice angle to approach into the green. Yeah, we have a double Mando coming in here to this green to protect hole 11. Um, you really just want to place it in a, in a spot where you can kind of throw a hyzer or a straight shot into the green. 
And we've got some OB on the right side in the tall grass. You'll see in a second. Yeah, it looked like a little OB long there. Yeah, OB left or OB on the right side and OB long. So this is just a straight position play from Kenny, it looks like. He's throwing the forehand hyzer, give himself an angle to the green. Yep. Ian kind of skirts with that OB line a little bit, and Heiser's in nicely. Should be in a good spot. Yeah, I couldn't tell if he loved it or hated it. We got a pretty stiff headwind, and this is my Halo Wraith. You can see kind of turning over the OB right now. And I was lucky to have come back in bounds there. But it actually puts me in a really good spot. Yeah, that looks to be a great spot to approach from. I'm sure you were, uh, you know, a little puckered <laughs> on the tee pad there, but works out all right. We've already seen Bo's forehand prowess. He's looking for that same position play that Kenny threw. He looks to get a hold of it a little bit too much. Yeah, the wind got a hold of it as well, and any fades that, that disc might have did not show. So he's kind of in no man's land here, right? Like, he can't make the mando from there. He has to just try to put it in a position to play for par. Yeah, there was zero play for the green there. He just wants to get himself a, a chance to save his par there. Ian goes Heiser Skipper. Hey, pun. Yeah, that's kind of the play from back here. Um, so far, Ian playing the hole perfectly. Yeah, I'm guessing that skip helps to control the speed coming into this basket. Yeah, Bo. Nice flare skip from Bo. Yeah, he was still in a tricky spot there. This hole's not easy. There's a there's a low ceiling coming into the green and again sloping away. So it's touchy. Oh. Kenny nearly dunks it for the two. This is a very nice spot you've got here, but now you lose the ability to really skip this, right? You yeah. you have to throw more of a touch shot yeah. in given yeah. the way that the hill is sloping, unless you want to go some sort of straight skip forehand. Yeah, that's a it's a bump and run play, and it's not what I practiced. I I actually mm. not played this hole before. Just kind of going off of what people are saying. Always tricky. Sometimes that can help. Sometimes it can hurt. Ian can't quite reach that one into the basket. He'll have to settle for a par after a couple of nice shots. Looks like Christian, you're down in the ferns. Yeah, it skips a little long. Still well in the circle, though. Kenny with some nice encouragement for you there. What? Good nice. putt. A little high, but... Yeah, I think I hit the very top link on that chain. There's and no pictures on the scorecard. There is video of it, but... <laughs> Always make sure to thank the basket when putts like that go in. Birdie for Kenny. Ian, I'm sure, a little disappointed after playing the hole pretty well to take his par. Yeah, this was actually the hardest hole in the course for both rounds. And here's a nice highlight reel from hole six, featuring our drives. Yeah, always nice to see the fellas get a star frame. I wish we did the European thing of shaking the chains or, I don't know, at least doing a little hoot and hollering. <laughs> I'm always a fan of that. Maybe someday something like that will catch on. Thank you guys for checking out our coverage today. This was the front nine of round one of Raven's Run at Lucky Mud Disc Golf Course in Skamakaway, Washington. I am Max Spears, and I am joined here today with Christian Wolf. Thank you to all of our sponsors. Check out Fairway Media on all social media platforms, and don't forget about the store. Hey guys, hit that subscribe button.